and then Mr. Floyd. <coughs> All right, not seeing Mr. Floyd present today or anyone on behalf of uh, his counsel. He received notice that today would resume. And so I will make a finding that he's decided not to attend today's round two. All right, anything we need to take up before resuming? We have someone from the gallery. Okay, and and Mr. Floyd has decided what exactly? Did he? Ms. Gross? It, it sounds like it's a deliberate choice for Mr. Morrison not to be present this morning, and the defendant was certainly here yesterday if he joins later. Um, otherwise, I think we can call that a voluntary waiver. Okay, I agree, and I haven't heard anything else from Mr. Morrison or any other counsel. Uh, is there anything we need to take up before resuming testimony here? Let me start with the state. I'm sorry, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yesterday, the state had asked that Ms. Uh, Yuri be, her, her subpoena be um, held in case we needed to recall. I let her attorney know last night after speaking to we don't intend to recall her, and as far as the state's concerned, I know she'd already been released from um, the subpoena from the other side, so there was no, no reason for her to be from the state. State's All right, Ms. Merchant, can we, can we excuse Ms. Yurdy? Um, um, I talked to her attorney last night, and I said I, we had a different conversation, so I think she's still on standby. Um, so your position has changed since yesterday? Yeah. Well, based on the state's representation that they may have rebuttal evidence, but they didn't give us that, so I don't know what that is. Um, so in rebuttal, if they present something in rebuttal that I need to call her to about All right, we'll address it as it comes up. Uh, what else? Anything else, Ms. Cross? Um, not from the state, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Merchant. Um, just, I, I know that we are still in the middle of Ms. Willis, um, but we need to address some of the things that were said yesterday in court in regards to Mr. Bradley, privilege, things like that. Do you want to do that now, or would you rather do that before Mr. Bradley? When you say address them, what do you mean? Um, well, there's a couple different issues, but we've got the privilege issue is one of them. Um, but I also, so I, what I did was I drafted all my questions and I thought I could give those to the court, um, because the council everyone could review them so we didn't have to worry about the privilege stuff. Um, there's also, there were some allegations made, um, I had a transcript made of the proceeding yesterday, um, some specific allegations that I think I should have an opportunity to review, um, specifically that I had egregiously misrepresented, um, that things that I had said were patently false and that all of that information came from Mr. Abadi speaking of Mr. Chopros. I spoke with Mr. Chopra, maybe we talked to him in the car on the way here on speakerphone, Mr. Merchant and I, and he said that he didn't tell Mr. Abadi any of that information, doesn't know where Mr. Abadi got it from. Mr. Abadi says that he did, and so, you know. <laughs> uh, if, we, if there's any clearing of the air that needs to happen, and if we need to get to that, I think the right time would be once we've actually seen all the evidence that comes out. So. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to let the court know. Thank you. And in terms of the uh, privilege issue, if you're if you're planning to recall Mr. Bradley, and you've actually typed out some specific questions, then uh, yes, I think that would be helpful and uh, might allow things to proceed a little more efficiently through his testimony. So, if, to the extent you've got those typed out and are willing to provide those to counsel for Mr. Bradley and the state, uh, that would I'd encourage you to do that. And when we before we call him, we can get into that as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Copy for the court. I have copy for. <coughs> I have one copy for Mr. Evans. Um, I know Mr. Body was objecting to privilege yesterday, but I think it's actually Mr. Evans. Was Mr. Evans? Mr. Evans is here. Okay. All right. Anything else uh, from any counsel? Uh, we'll make sure it's still. Rule is still in place. All right. Uh, not seeing anything else. If we could bring back in uh, Ms. Willis. Actually, Your Honor, the state um, has no further questions for Ms. Willis. So. All right. No need to recall. Okay, Ms. Merchant. Next witness. I think we're about to hit the privilege issue. We are about to hit the privilege issue. There we are. <laughs> okay. Then do you need a counsel need a moment to take a look at her questions? Yes. So I've got um, I've got a copy. Oh, I guess Mr. Evans. And then do we have Mr. Bradley somewhere in the whereabouts nearby? Mr. Chopra, I informed Mr. Chopra that he's still under subpoena. 
Well, him and his client. Yes. Uh, well, um, I'm also uh, with Mr. Bradley, uh, and he's actually not here today. He's we need you to notify yourself for the record, sir. I'm Van Ward. Uh, he's not here to, at this moment. He has a doctor's appointment um, uh, that he's currently in as we, as we speak. Um, and uh, his representation is, is, is on the way here as well. Uh, I'd love to be able to get one of the... Do you have a time estimate of when he's supposed to be here? Of the questions? Not Where's the doctor in relation to here? Yes, at the very, at the very earliest, it would be, he would be free about 10 o'clock, 10 to 10 30. All right, he's, he's currently driving here as we speak. He's at the, he's at the actual uh, doctor's office as we speak. Okay. And, and I think the council was informed of that last night that, that he would not be here until at the earliest 10 to 10 30. All right. I wasn't until 10 or 10 30, but. Sure. Ms. Merchant, other than Mr. Bradley, did you have any other witnesses? Um, not that I can call before Mr. Bradley. But I do think we can take up some of the privileges that we have. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. No, I think we can use this time to do that. So okay. why don't you all take a moment to look at the questions and then let me know when you're ready to proceed. Okay. My part of it has. Does that be a question? I understood yesterday. I don't want I know these gentlemen are looking at the same time, so you want me to wait until they've had a chance to Well, I think you're about to maybe make a, a legal qualification here, so why don't we why don't we hear what you got? Right. Yesterday it sounded as if the witness was going to decline to answer any questions at all in relation to communications or observations or anything, be it independent source or otherwise, um, that took place during the time of the uh, alleged attorney-client privilege or relationship, which is 2015, I think, until the present. I understood that as referencing not simply attorney-client privilege communications, but what we commonly refer to under 1.6 as competences and secrets which are not covered by the attorney client and are not barred from uh, testimony or evidence in a courtroom. But it sounded as if the court was going to have to order this Mr. Bradley to testify, and then Mr. Bradley will have to take a position of whether he's going to follow the court's order, heed the court's order, or whether he's not. If he does, then we'll be able to get in hopefully the questions that this merchant has prepared on Mr. Roman's behalf. If he says, I'm not going to comply, then theoretically we're in a position in which the court will have to hold him in contempt. And then, at that point, my guess would be that somebody would say, I would like him to keep, to have the contempt stayed while I take it up on appeal. So I'm just trying to play through where we're going sure. to be. Because if we're going to do that, we might as well notice before we start putting them on the stand. Uh, I think that's a good thing to flag now, and I agree that yesterday during the hearing there was some intermingling of 1.6 and attorney-client privilege, and now having had the time to kind of parse through that, and it does seem that there is a distinction between the two. One is not covered by the evidentiary privilege, and pulling the case of Tenant Healthcare Corp, 273 Georgia 206. Uh, Supreme Court does make that distinction. So uh, to that end, Mr. Evans, as we work through these issues, I would say that when Mr. Bradley takes the stand, I would be directing him uh, to respond and be responsive to any questioning uh, that may be covered by Rule 1.6. That would be the order of this court. But that still reserves the issue of attorney-client privilege. So as you're reviewing those questions, we'll keep that in mind, and I'll be interested to hear your response. Anything else you think we should clarify before we take a break to look at the questions? Do you have a copy for me? Yes, I do. A copy of the questions, Judge, and um, I also have copies of the um, There's the exhibit that I would be filing Thank you. 